Mind wandering makes up a huge percentage of your day, about 50% according to a lot of people. What's interesting about that is that your brain and your body doesn't do useless things. Mm. Why is your brain spending 50% of its time doing this? And why is it always automatic? When we mind wander, why do we mind wander to places sometimes we don't want to go, like bad memories? So what's interesting is there are two brain networks that I focus on. Uh, the default mode network, which is where you default to, which is where your mind wanders off to when you're not paying attention to a task. Okay. It's your ego, it's yourself, it's your memories, it's your associations. Mm -hmm. Versus the executive network, mm -hmm. which is when you're paying attention to a task. You're on task and you're focused. Usually, these two, introspection, self-reflection, mm -hmm. and task focus are anti-correlated. They're opposites. So that's what you feel when you're very focused or when you're wandering. You when you're wandering and not on task. Kind of exactly, you mm -hmm. can feel the difference. Mm -hmm. What's really interesting about mindfulness and what's a new result is that those two networks, when people are very mindful, start to integrate. Mm -hmm. When they were opposites, they start to work together. Mm. And, what and that when you say mindful, you don't mean the focusing thing. You mean that non-judgmental being here and now, yeah. in the present moment? I do. I also mean focusing on your focus. I mean paying attention to where your attention is. Okay. So, people can be off task, can be driving to work on the same drive they do every day and totally zoning out, but they can be following where their mind is going and following that creative path. That's being mindful even when your mind wandering. Mm. This integration of opposite networks is a new and really exciting result because it validates what practitioners and meditators already say. Mm. What they say when they say, gosh, when your mind wanders and thinks about how your left foot is feeling and how itchy your sweater is, they're always thinking about that. They're, they're, they're more involved in their body and they're more practiced. When they introspect and think about their ego, it's not automatic. Mm. They're following it and pulling their thoughts to better places and pulling them back to being, mm. paying attention and being on task. Mm. What I mean to say is the objective data from the brain totally matches up with the subjective data from practitioners and meditators. It's so the same the science, story. science people are watching their machines, they can see that that is correlating with what the people say about what they experience. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So when people say, yes, when I think about myself, I have more control over it. I can pull myself from negative to positive associations. Mm -hmm. We say, actually, we can see those networks working together. Executive network, where I execute a task, working with default mode so network where I think about that? myself. So you mean the scientists could see this happen? We can see these two networks start to work with each other yeah. the more mindful people are. Oh, yeah. So the more meditation and mindfulness training you have, the, the less these networks are anti-correlated, the more they're working together and the more they're coherent. Really cool. Another thing you found uh, is uh, that when people can see what the scientists can see, that the networks are sort of being active or deactivated, it happens something also with the meditation learning. That's what you're talking about, yeah. sorry. Yeah, so, okay. no, no, so the study I think you're referencing is a really interesting study by a, a guy named Judson Brewer on the posterior cingulate cortex, which is PCC, which mm -hmm. is part of this default mode mind-wandering network. Yeah. So we know that when people are meditating successfully, that network is generally deactivated. Mm -hmm. The PCC specifically is deactivated, it's yeah. less active. So what Judson Brewer did was, hey, Instead of just understanding it, I'm going to use this as a training tool. So he puts people on the scanner, he shows them real-time activity mm -hmm. of that part of the brain, the PCC, and then when they meditate, they can watch the activity go from active to inactive, and they can say, oh, now I'm doing it. Yeah. So the example from the study was a man who was paying attention to his breath, saying, in, out, in, out, and he was saying, it's red. Why is it active? I want it to be blue. But then he said, all right, I'm going to calm down and just breathe and just experience mm. the breath. And he saw it go from red to blue and he said, oh, mm. that's what we're talking about. Yeah. That's what we're doing. So it can be a training tool as well as an understanding yeah. tool. So when he saw on the screen what he was experiencing, he could say, aha, that's the experience of meditating. Right. Which and is, that would make him learn something. Exactly. So that's you're turning right. a mode of understanding yeah. into a teaching tool, right. which is really Great. exciting. Thank you so much, Adam. Thank you. I'm very happy to see you. Yeah, so nice Thank to you. talk. Nice to talk. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.